We're back, another episode of MPTV. We are still in Pigeon Forge, downtown Flavortown, and we're with the man who helps us with the marketing down here. Yeah. Who we work collaboratively with, Andrew, how are you? I'm great, how are you doing, Matt? I'm doing amazing, so tell what? the audience on the internet lands yes. who you are and your role down here. Sure, my name is Andrew Bledsoe. I'm the marketing director for Face Amusement and Hospitality, which is the parent company that owns downtown Flavortown and a lot of other great arcades and restaurants throughout the Southeast. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here with you and excited to talk to you about what we've got going on. So what was unique about you is that typically when we have a client that has us on board doing stuff and somebody new comes in the mix, yeah, it's always like, oh crap, like is this new person gonna agree with our philosophies? Yeah. Are they not going to agree? You're, you and I and my team have really meshed well. Oh yeah. You, I don't want to say that a lot of people don't have the open mind, but we run into people at different concepts, different brands that have their mind made up on marketing that yeah. they got to be at all. Yeah. Whereas I, from my feeling with you, was that you're looking like, hey, you're you guys are we're another bullet in your in your gun. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I've been doing digital marketing for 15 years, uh, a lot of different companies and a lot of different roles. And the one thing that I've learned is that you know you you should always rely on good partnerships with people to help you accomplish your goals. You can't do everything. There's this running joke about, you know, the do-it-yourself marketer or the one-man show. There's a lot of memes on Facebook and LinkedIn of these guys, you know, they're, they're playing the tambourine and the cymbals and everything. And, you know, it's good in one sense because you do get to see everything, you know everything that's going on, but you can't do everything by yourself. So you have to have good partners. And the thing that I liked about you guys when you first came on board was, you know, Bucky and I, my, my boss, had a previous relationship and he said, I've got this team, they're working with me, I want you to get involved with them, let me know what you think. And as a marketer, I think that you always put people through a litmus test when yeah. you first meet them to make sure they know what they're talking about. You, you throw out a couple things and you just make sure that they don't like yeah. make stuff up. And that was what was so impress, impressing um, with your team is that everyone knew their stuff and they knew their stuff to a high degree more so than I did, which that's who I want to work with. Yeah because I, I don't want to work with people that know less than I do. I want to work with people that know more than I do. So you've got Ashley on your team and Tom. These are people that I can say, all right, here's what we want to do. Does this make sense? Or is there a better way to do this? Like we just had a meeting here. You've got Ashley in the room. We're talking about targeting and yep. we've got a couple executives in the room and they don't know any of this stuff. They don't understand it. And she's just, going through it. This is how this works. This is how that works. And it makes things so much easier when you're running a place that has, you know, so many different facets. We've got bowling here. We've got the arcade. We've got the restaurant. So we could really get into a mess when it comes to targeting, trying to sell all these attractions, but you guys do it very well. And they, I'm the same way. Cause I back early on, I was that jack of all trades. Yeah. You know, I was doing everything. And then when I hired Ashley 11, 11 years ago or so, and now we're up to 55 plus people. Yeah. It's bringing, they're all bullets in my gun. Exactly. And the one thing that I struggle with a lot is, it seems like a lot of times, and you can probably answer the question on this or talk about it, is that a lot of restaurants I come across, even small business owners, yes. there's, they, they don't have that tied in relationship with their vendor. It's like, hey, Correct. we're paying you, do this, see you later. And one of the reasons sure. we came down here, we drove four and a half hours, came yeah. down here, because I want to have a relationship that's like, hey, what are the pains? What are the opportunities? How can we work together versus yeah. just do this? Yeah, so that's a good point because a lot of restaurant owners get into this cycle of self-defeat where someone walks through the door and you know, this person will say, hey, tell me about your marketing. What are you doing? Sell them on a package for maybe $250, $350 a month. I'll handle all your marketing. Okay, well, that money goes out the window. You never see it again. Okay, maybe they post some things on social media, they run some paid ads, you never see the ads, you don't know what they look like. And then as a restaurant owner, you're just thinking, well, that was a waste of money. So at your earliest opportunity, you jump out of the contract. Maybe the next guy comes in, same sort of spiel. With you guys though, the return on investment is very apparent, it's measured. I have a dashboard at midnight, midnight 30, I can pull it up on my phone, which I do sometimes, <laughs> and say, okay. So that sort of data makes it easy for us to spend money. Okay. Because I'll tell you this one thing, 
a couple months ago, <clears throat> we had some needs for uh, digital ad spend with another branch of the organization. We, we were looking at doing some paid Google ads, basically. So I took a call with this organization. I can't even remember where they were out of. I think I found them on LinkedIn. Uh, young lady was super nice, very informative, um, but they didn't really have any way to measure the return on investment. So she's talking about us spending 10 and 20 and 30 thousand dollars, and I'm like, wait a second, how are we going to measure this? Well, you know, we can't really measure it per se by you know direct numbers, but now after six months, we can give you an estimated number, and I'm like, okay, well that sounds terrible. That sounds like a good way for me to lose my job. Um, and we started talking about budgets because at that point I was just trying to kind of get off the phone. And I said, um, she said, what sort of marketing budget do you work with? And I said, I don't know. If it's, if we're proving ourselves unlimited, you know, I, my marketing budget's a billion dollars. If I can pay you a billion dollars and then you make me five billion dollars, I'll do that every day. Every the day. same thing. And that's really what we found with America's Best Restaurants is that I can go to you guys with five bucks and I can say, here you go, spend this. You guys go and you spend it efficiently. I have that business walk through the door. The customer, guest, shows me that they've seen the ad and that they're there in the restaurant because of the ad. And then at the end of the day, I get to see that person on the dashboard. So it's, it's a very symbiotic relationship and it's a very profitable relationship. That's all it's good to hear. Yeah, right? I mean, that's what you want. And, and I also appreciate you guys because as far as being that marketing guy, sometimes you can kind of go a little bit too far um, out there with, you know, watching from the window, so to speak, what you guys are doing. And your team has always been great about that because they're used to me jumping in there saying, hey, we need this dashboard changed and we need this. And now we're not going to do this offer anymore, but we are going to do this. And by the way, we need it all done by next Tuesday. And they, they've always delivered. And that's something that we look for in vendors. We, we have to work with people that get it, that can get out there, get it done, because we've got a restaurant to run. We don't have time to mess with this other stuff. We're not the experts on this, you guys are. Yeah, I appreciate that. And the, the cool part about it is, my background is in radio in the yeah. late 90s. And I was scared shitless to walk into a restaurant like this and be like, hey, how are your ads running? Because I had no clue. Yeah. And that was what really got me early on from like 08 to 2013, 14 with this company was I wanted to sit, like I was the at-large marketing director. Yeah. And I was sitting across the table from guys like you and the owner or the owner and saying, hey, what expertise can I bring to the table to help? Yeah. But how can I tie it back to results? Yeah. And that's one of the big elements and you know, the acquisition side allows us. Now there's a lot of things out there that we're gonna do for clients that don't directly have results. It's yeah. got some video marketing, podcasting, things like that that we yeah. think will help get attention. Yeah. But I believe it helps when the relationship starts off with, okay, we see these two, three, four things happening and we see the result. Correct. You know, we see the catering leads come in and you know, myself and Chad start calling them yesterday as a yeah. test. So you see that pull in there. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a halo effect with that too. So if my social media is on point, if my digital ad spend is on point, my SEO is on point, my websites, if all these things are firing on all cylinders, when I go to run digital ads, those ads perform much better. Yeah. So when I'm doing all the right things and I'm not relying on just an ad spin, yeah. but I've got someone in my corner that's saying, hey, you need to be on TikTok, you need to be on Instagram, notice that you've not posted on Facebook in about a month and a half. One of your guys told me that the other day too. <laughs> Scott? <laughs> yeah, so, but, but it's true, right? You have to look at it from this, you know, 100,000 foot view that everything has to, everything's got its place and everything has to be firing on all cylinders in order for that guest to really want to interact with your brand. We talked a little bit today about ghost kitchens and the challenges that you have when you've got a brand out there that really doesn't have that same pull through on social media, websites, SEO. As a consumer, you feel that. You see this ad for some chicken restaurant that you've never heard of and you're like, wait a second. You can tell that the images are a little generic. You scroll right past yep. it. You see it on third party, you're accustomed to it. That's, yeah. that's what it is. That's why yeah. you're there. Yeah, third party. I, yeah. Absolutely. Sell me wings and things out of the back of the Hooters. I don't care. But if I'm dining with my family in Pigeon yeah. Forge, I'm going to want to go somewhere where I feel like I'm going to get the experience. Yeah. And, th and that's, what, that's what we excel at here at Downtown Flavortown is the experience. We just need to get people into our locations to experience those things. Well, 
Awesome. We appreciate your business. Absolutely. Appreciate your time. They appreciate lunch. Yeah, anytime. Trash can nachos are just to die for. If you've not had them, make certain you come down to downtown Flavortown, get the trash can nachos. We want to see those videos on social media. Uh, so yeah, it's always great to have you, Matt. Thanks a bunch. Get down here, get the trash can, get the duck pin bowling, get yes. the arcade, hang out at the Tiki Bar. We'll see you next episode.